right now now what will happen is what happened in wolf kishner reduction for the first time we saw that n2 gas is a very very good leaving group n2 gas if you facilitate if you heat up a reaction a little bit system a little bit if you shake up the system a little bit this n2 gas leaves now you have to facilitate the formation of uh, this n2 gas now how are you going to facilitate this two nitrogen has already double bond so you have to generate one more bond between them so you can generate one more bond between them by developing a plus charge on this carbon because this n minus and this n plus will form a bond so to facilitate that this bond will be shifted into the orbital the, the, the electrons in this bond will be shifted into the orbital of this nitrogen so when you do that this is what you have this is a n triple bond n and this minus and the plus charge that developed because of the shifting formed a bond this is what you have all right now now further you can guess what's going to happen this n2 gas will leave when this n2 gas will leave it will leave as a neutral molecule so it has to take away the electron in order to neutralize itself when it takes away the electron this nitrogen is gaining a plus charge now this nitrogen will have a plus charge and there would be a formation of nitrene but a pure nitrene will not be formed because of migration of this r group and this r group will start to make a bond with this nitrogen when this happens then this r group is attached to this nitrogen this n2 goes away fine when this n2 goes away suppose the things are taking place in steps for sake of understanding suppose n2 gas leaves then this nitrogen gains a plus charge from here suppose r minus comes out this r minus and this n plus forms a bond there's a negative charge on nitrogen already this n minus and this c plus will again form a bond so what's going to happen is this n2 gas is going to come out and you are going to get a isocyanate once again once again why where did it form earlier do you remember it was formed in hoffman bromamide as well right and the pathway from here you know what happens to isocyanate once isocyanate is formed when you hydrolyze it this isocyanate will turn into a amine from this half and this will come out as carbon dioxide gas so you you work out the mechanism yourself very quickly i'll just give you an idea if you're having a acid catalyzed hydrolysis then this water is going to attack this carbon because this carbon is having electron deficiency because both the atoms oxygen and nitrogen are pulling up the electrons pulling the electrons away from this carbon so this oxygen is going to attack this carbon and then that plus charge on that oxygen if 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 if, if this carbon is going to form a form a bond then it is going to break one of the previous bond if you break this bond this nitrogen will gain a plus charge oxygen then will give us hydrogen to this nitrogen and then if you remove of this co2 gas the nitrogen will again develop a minus charge and again water will give it a hydrogen and this will, is going to turn into rnh2 so this is amine and plus co2 gas will come out because system is not basic so this is not this will not turn into carbonate it will remain as co2 gas fine so you started with a sil chloride and you are getting a amine in this courteous reaction now i didn't deal with the mechanism in detail because we have dealt with this in hoffman bromamide although it was a base basic hydrolysis in base catalyzed hydrolysis here we have acid catalyzed hydrolysis but i'm assuming you people have grown up enough so that you'll cope up with this mechanism on your own so the point is your sil with you started with acyl chloride and you are you are getting finally this amine this you have to learn this is courteous reaction what do you take in this you take sodium azide 
fine fine now what you have to do is you have to sit back and take some time think what happened learn this the name courteous reaction know what's the reactant know what's the reagent know what's the product fine and map this in your mind because we are going to solve a conversion problem and before you attempt that conversion problem uh, give some time to yourself in order to memorize this thing fully okay so let's start let's start with a let's hydrolyze this then let's get b on b allow me to put socl2 in order to get c and then let's add sodium azide to get d which reaction this should be sodium azide this reaction isn't it good on c suppose if we add hydrogen in presence of palladium catalyst poison with barium sulfate that yields us e on e if we add ammonia that gives us f f on treatment with s2pd gives g we could have got g directly from a if we would have added h on a so h is a reagent you have to identify that let's increase this chain a little bit suppose i add ammonia gas along with heat on b to get i and on i if i add j then i would get d fine so find out a b c d e f g h i and j ah i have to give you something right i haven't given you anything so you will not be able to find it out so uh what information should i give you uh 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 okay let me give it this on c suppose if you add hydrazine in a basic medium you get toluene so this is your key so i have made this conversion considerably easy for you because you will get c directly and that from c within a minute you'll get all of them so try this out work this problem most of the reactions are from this chapter i mean some of the reactions have been borrowed from other chapters just to help you revise those reactions and and just to help myself to build this conversion problem so please try this conversion problem on your own find out a b c d e f g h i j fine and then uh, we'll discuss this conversion problem